Welcome to Live Action Star Wars. My name is James, and today I'm here all by myself to do a little mini episode. And I'm going to be reviewing the new book by author Mike Chen, Star Wars Brotherhood. It was released last Tuesday, I believe, uh, around the world. And I had it pre ordered. Uh, I was eagerly awaiting this one. So picked it up, plowed through it in a week. I've got a written review up on tinyletter.com forward slash James Hewlett. Uh, and I thought I'd just do a little video review for all you guys. Uh, Sarah's here. Morning, Sarah. Uh, yeah, this is the first non High Republic Star Wars book that I've read in quite a while. And I got to say that before I read it, uh, before like, when it was first announced, I wasn't particularly excited. Uh, I read all the old uh clone wars books in 2002 to 2005 when they were coming out i've seen all the clone wars i i feel like we've got a lot of anakin and obi-wan content in that time so i didn't feel like it was anything new there to do uh i was really pleased to find out that i was wrong this is i think it's the first canon book set with these two characters in particular there's been a couple of others the ahsoka book is set around this time and then after um and there's the a couple of the other books that have sort of picked up the arcs of the clone wars that never got produced but this is the first i believe original novel in the clone wars that is now considered canon it it does what all good star wars books do and the thing that a lot of people criticize them or think that star wars novels are where It'll take a throwaway piece of dialogue. For this, this case, it's the that business on Kato Nemoya doesn't doesn't count line from Revenge of the Sith. It takes that and it runs with it. Now, sometimes in the past, it's been quite tacky, and it's been a case of there's been a line of dialogue or something that we've seen on screen, and then they've over-explained it to the point where it's just not interesting, and it's better left as a mystery. This book has taken what is just a, a throwaway comedy line between two people who are clearly friends who are clearly have a close bond and it extrapolates it and it explains what that particular business on Kate and Nemoidia was it could have been a big thing or it could have been nothing um and this explores what that situation was and in the grand schemes of the clone wars it was consequential but not earth shattering um Basically, we find out at the beginning of this book, it starts uh, very shortly after Attack of the Clones. So just after the Geonosian Arena battle and the Clone Wars in earnest have kicked off. Anakin Skywalker is just been knighted for everything that he did in that situation, I assume. And because they need Jedi Knights, they can't afford to just have people training and going through the trials in the old traditional sense of the the order uh and obi-wan since mentoring a padawan up through knighthood has been granted the title of master in attack of the clones also we see the death of coleman trabor uh goes off the balcony i think Django shoots him uh and that leaves an opening on the jedi council at the start of this book that spot that we know from revenge of the sith will eventually be held by obi-wan kenobi is vacant and they are, it feels like they're sort of testing the waters to see which of their Jedi Masters they would like in that position in a more permanent role. So at the start here, Obi-Wan is sort of doing his stint sitting in on the council. I think just to see how he gels with all the others. Um, we know that he gets on well with Yoda. We've seen him discuss things with uh, Kiari Mundi and Face Windu in the past in the movies and things, but how's he going to fit in? This, this book is where he is in his position here. Um, Anakin is literally, he's just arrived back on Coruscant after his escorting Padme back to Naboo, uh, where he secretly got married and had a little bit of time, it seems like, for somewhat of a honeymoon, but more of a, hey, we're newlyweds, let's just have some fun at the lake. Uh, he's back, he's getting knighted. He's he's been knighted, and now this is like the official ceremony. There's a few other Padawans who are going through a similar thing. Probably the ones who are all at uh, Geonosis, I would assume. They are named. It's inconsequential. Around the same time, uh, there has been a bombing 
on the planet of Kate in Nemoidia, the, the home world of the Neomoidians, the Trade Federation people, Nuke Gunray from the films. We've like I always assumed that Kate in Nemoidia was a separatist world, that the Trade Federation seemed to represent them in the Senate with Lot Dodd, uh, and that they are fully affiliated with the separatists. That isn't the case. Now, I don't know if this was explored further in the Clone Wars. It's been a while since I've watched any episodes involving them. Um, but Kato Nemoidia and the Neomoidian people are, they're neutral. So they they will, they're not neutral in the same way that Mandalore is neutral with Satine, who is, doesn't want any part of it, doesn't want to involve herself with the Republic or the Separatists. Kato Nemoidia and Trade Federation, both of them, are they're neutral but in the way that they'll sell droids to the trade uh to the separatists that's why they've got the the battle droids the sort of trade federation battle droids but they will also deal with trade routes with the republic they will work with whoever wants to work with them they're not taking a side um now their their planet we see it briefly in revenge of the sith it's all all the cities are bridges it's sort of a very chasm like world and the start of this book there's been a bombing and one of the the capital cities at least a big portion of it has been bombed and is is fallen that's that's the 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 setup for this book the republic want to send an investigator the separatists want to send an investigator both sides are blaming the other it no one is sure who did it uh so instead of sending a representative or the chancellor himself which they deem is dangerous the Jedi Council steps in and they say, we'll send Obi-Wan Kenobi. He can go and be our representative investigating this crime. On the other side, uh, Dooku still trying to be diplomatic, at least sort of in public facing things. Uh, he's like, yep, yeah, cool. That's fine. I agree with those terms. I'm going to send my representative as well. That's where that leaves off. Um, and then basically... Obi-Wan gets there, meets with an ex-Special Forces Nemoidian guard uh, named Rug, or R-U-U-G, I don't know. I, I was saying it as Rug. And she is sort of the, the local investigator. She's So they're working together. There's some tension. She doesn't trust the Republic. Her protege definitely doesn't trust the Republic. They also aren't too trusting of the Separatists either but they are very much affiliated with the Trade Federation, who at this point have deemed Newt Gunray a, a rogue agent. He he is a part of the Trade Federation, but he doesn't necessarily represent them, although it seems like behind the scenes he definitely still does. But in public, they, they have nothing to do with him. The neutrality of Kate and Amodia was really interesting to me because it's not a side that we've seen before. Uh, and the, especially from the first person perspective of Rug, uh, it's not first person, but the the chapters following her and her point of view, because she genuinely wants what's best for her people and doesn't want to escalate the war anymore. There are members of her government of have, her have side that are, they are trying to play one side against the other, but she wants the neutrality. She doesn't want to be involved. And that's not a side of the Clone Wars that I think we've seen enough of, and I liked getting more of that. Obi-Wan relies heavily on Dex in this book. He uses he visits Dex's diner a couple of times. He contacts Dex because he knows that going through the Republic, they're going to get one bias going through any other means you're going to get going through the Jedi, you're going to get a, a bias leaning towards the Republic side of this. And he genuinely wants to find the truth. That is his goal. Uh, so he goes to his old friend Dex, who definitely has more uh, knowledge over wisdom. So it's, it's nice to see some of that relationship develop more. Uh, we get a hint of it in Attack of the Clones and it's great. You love to see it. But here we get a little bit more depth and it's good fun. We also get a lot of development between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Anakin's side of the story for the first half of the book is that he's been assigned to a 
a relief miss- mission basically he's he's taking supplies to one of the planets that have been wrapped up in early battles of the clone wars and they need aid so he is going to be escorting this he then then finds out as he's boarding his ship he's doing that with a group of younglings one of the clans that are they're on their way to go and do the gathering to get their kyber crystals so they're that age they're not padawans yet they are they've just sort of getting to the end of their training probably with yoda in the temple they're all excited they are young you're talking sort of eight nine ten year old kids um one of those children has a very unique connection to the force mill abareth or alibeth uh she she doesn't enjoy feeling conflict and whenever she is around people using the force and there is conflict so you know the clone wars have just kicked off conflict is all around it makes her physically sick she she is empathetic in that way that she she feels it all and takes it all personally and can't do anything about that she has a very unique power set amongst force users that i've not seen before and it seems like it's extremely rare because characters in this book mention how troubling it is and so at this point early on in the story she is trying to cut herself off from the force she doesn't want any part of it then she comes in contact with anakin and anakin who also has his troubles with force using he has at this point he has recently slaughtered tuscan raiders his mother has just died in his arms. He secretly got married. He's trying to lead a secret life with Padme. He's trying to escape and have time with her whenever he possibly can while attending his newly knighted sort of duties as a Jedi. Uh, also, he feels loyal to Chancellor Palpatine. So he's being torn in all directions and he's he's trying to find his place. And this youngling, Mill, is trying to find her place but she thinks that her place isn't with the jedi order anakin tries to convince her that it is and the two of them strike up a friend a friendly sort of bond and kinship because they are outcasts amongst an entire order themselves they eventually break off from the rest of their group to go and help everyone when he looks like things aren't going particularly well for him uh his whole deal with going to Kate and Nemoidia that would be that he does it independently, doesn't have any contact or involvement with others, but Anakin and Obi-Wan, you know what they're like. They're always going to stay in contact when they probably shouldn't. The two of them, when it comes together, is when the action really kicks off. It's about halfway through the book. You go about 250 pages out of the 350-page book without too much action there's a couple of like we see anakin and padme in a a speeder at one point and uh there's a a nice chase scene from obi-wan but it's a lot more of the investigation that we get with obi-wan early on in attack of the clones he's he's digging he's poking around he's he's looking for clues and with anakin it's a lot more teaching this kid who he has no interest in teaching he doesn't want to take on a padawan uh this is before he's met ahsoka this is pre anything that we see in the clone wars um so it's only when the two of them meet back up uh, on kate and Amoidia that the action really kicks into high gear and to answer the million dollar question of should that business on kate and Amoidia count it from a certain point of view uh, it really, really is from a certain point of view. I can see why Anakin thinks that he came in and saved Obi-Wan, but I can see why Obi-Wan might hold that one against him. Uh, Mike Chen does a very good job of making it so that, yes, Anakin arriving definitely helped, but the way that Anakin arrives, not so much. And it's it's the funniest scene in the book for me uh it's it's very good uh there's a chapter break and when you pick back up it's it's very very funny when you find out exactly what happened it's about halfway through the book it's worth checking out just for that scene alone i think uh the the thread of anakin training someone for the first time really is is very good and it's it's that connection and then when you've got the anakin obi-wan and mill relationship it feels like this is planting the seeds for the clone wars for the anakin obi-wan and ahsoka relationship 
uh, Ahsoka is very much Anakin's Padawan, but because Anakin and Obi Wan work as partners a lot throughout the Clone Wars, she's she refers to them both as, as masters. She's she takes training from both of them and from the rest of the Jedi Order. We see her with other people throughout the series. This sets that up. Um, Obi Wan often starts to refer to Anakin as his Padawan, but then has to correct himself because for the last 10 years that has been, and for basically most of their time knowing each other, that has been their relationship. It's been that master apprentice tiered system. It's, it's very much father and son. There's a line in attack of the clones that I I believe he's like, why do I think that you're going to be the death of me? Don't say that master. You're the closest thing I ever had to a father. And at that point in their lives, it is very much a father and son type relationship, despite them being too close in age for that to be the case. At this point, at the start of this book, they are both struggling with uh, Obi-Wan in particular about how that develops, what that relationship really should be. And it's by the end of it that they realize that they are much better together seeing each other eye to eye as equals, as brothers hence the title Brotherhood, uh, and that really they've always been that way. They should have always been that way. The The bickering that they do, the back and forth that they do, isn't antagonistic as it once was, and it wasn't fighting Anakin fighting and rebelling just for the sake of it. It's very much, Obi-Wan's done a good thing, I'm going to try and one-up him, and then Obi-Wan going, okay, kid, like anything that you can do, I can still do better all with the right goal in mind they are they are shooting for the same destination and they they come to the realization that in a lot of ways they are both the sons of Qui-Gon like Qui-Gon discovered Anakin he trained Obi-Wan he there's a lot of his DNA despite not knowing Anakin for that long there is a lot of his good nature and his rebelliousness and everything that was Qui-Gon in both Anakin and Obi-Wan, but different aspects of it. You take the the those two, you put them together, and you get like a fully formed, trained by Qui-Gon character. Uh it's it's that relationship and the bond that they find by the end of this book that really sold it to me. The last few chapters where they are working as a tight, cohesive unit is is amazing to see. And it makes Revenge of the Sith and the downfall of Anakin all the more tragic because the love that they share for each other, the the bond that they have is so strong. And this is probably the strongest it is. Throughout the Clone Wars, we see it and they are on good terms. This is the beginning of that. This is them going, oh, wait, this is what we need to be and this is what works for both of us. Uh the only other little interesting thing is it's also the introduction in canon, at least, to Asajj Ventress. Ventress, who is a, a major character throughout the Clone Wars series, is introduced here. She is the agent that Dooku sends to Kate and Amoidia, and at this point she is hiding the fact she, she's a Force user. Uh, she meets Obi-Wan, she meets Rug, she meets the, the other Noemoidians, but she is she's hiding her lightsabers she's described as having a a a gravelly snake-like voice and the description is is very much her and then she gets involved a little bit heavier later on and then obviously escapes so that she can go on to be in the clone wars and have a really good arc in that that closes out in another clone wars book the the one with quinlan voss dark disciple um it's it's an interesting introduction, but obviously because of where she goes in the Clone Wars series, they can't do too much with her. But it's nice seeing that at the beginning of the Clone Wars, when Obi Wan sees her in the Clone Wars movie, he's familiar with her already. They they know who she is. In this, they they've never met. She has had interactions with clones, and there's reports on her. There's there's talk, there's rumors, but no one knows anything official. She's sort of just the shadowy figure that is coming up. Uh, so that was a nice nod, but again, consequential, but not the primary antagonist. Um, 
I, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I, I was pleasantly surprised throughout. It was gripping despite being, I, I mean, I wouldn't even describe it as slow paced. It, there just wasn't the high action from the first half. But then after that, as soon as it kicks off, as soon as it gets going in a scene that reminded me a lot of uh, a, a particular scene in Game of Thrones that I'm not going to say, because I think it might give away some of what, where this goes. There's a, there's a particular moment with um, with Oberyn Martell, um, Pedro Pascal's character in Game of Thrones, that it reminded me of this, the way that it was playing out, the tension that was being built. And then from that point on in this book, it, it goes and it doesn't really let up until the closing chapters, which are sort of each character's epilogue, essentially, like where where they're ending up. And then there's the, the hint and the tease of... Uh, Anakin having his own Padawan he's like ha no not interested in that definitely don't want that I'm not ready for that thanks uh Commander Cody pops up at the very end so we're we're leading into the Clone Wars here um I I would love to see more books like this we've we've got Anakin and Obi-Wan I'd I like the Clone Wars as an era I'd like to see some of the other characters that we know about some of the other Jedi what were they up to like take take them popping into the Clone Wars and then do a story about where did they get to at that point? Or, well, what did they, when they flicked off of the hollow projector, where were they going then? Uh, that's the sort of Clone Wars books that I'd like to see because it's rife for stories. There's there's so much that you could do there. Mike Chen is a relatively new author to me. I had not read anything else that he'd done other than his one short-ish uh, story in the, from a certain point of view, Empire Strikes Back book which was, I believe it was the, what was the title of it? Disturbance, the Anakin Palpatine story, um, which is sort of in in Anakin's head when he's talking to Palpatine, if I remember correctly, uh, in in uh, Empire Strikes Back. So yeah, it, it was really cool seeing a new voice, a new author. Uh, I hope we get more Mike Chen Star Wars books in the future. Uh, next up on the books for Star Wars is the Luke Skywalker, Lando Calrissian, uh, uh, Uti of Bestoon, whatever his name is, uh, Ochi, Ochi of Bestoon book that comes out, I believe, next month. Uh, there's advanced reader copies out there already, and it looks like it's amazing. The first five chapters are out. I, I started reading it, and then I was like, no, I don't want to read five chapters now and then have to wait a month before I get mine. Um, so there will be another... James reviews books, uh, but mini episode for that next month when that comes out. But on Monday, uh, Ralph mentioned it at the end of the last regular episode. Uh, on Monday, I am going to be playing. Well, I'm going to be reviewing Star Wars Outer Rim. The board game came out a few years ago. Uh, I've played it a few times since it came out. I just played it again recently because there is an expansion coming out later this summer that I'm excited about. So I wanted to re-familiarize myself with the the main game before I, I go back in um it's a great book and, and i recommend everyone check it out uh i'm just gonna quickly i haven't really been paying attention to comments but i'm sure that i hope that a few of you have got some things that you want asking um <laughs> ralph ralph wanted me to explain it in detail so he doesn't have to read it ralph do you want me to just send you it as an audiobook would you want me to do that? I think I've got an audible credit. I could probably do that. Check it out. I'm not going to explain it in detail. I didn't want to give away any spoilers or anything here. Check it out. It's a very, very good book. Um, yeah, Mark Mark said it here as well. Like, just go and check out the audiobook. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I'd love to know what you think. Let me know. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm excited for more Ochi. We've seen him in some comics recently uh, and friend of the show, Adam Frazier has been reading his advanced copy of that book, uh, Sh Shadow of the Force, I think. Shadows, I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's it's out next month. It's got a very cool looking cover. I'm excited about it. Um, but until I guess Monday, and then so yeah, next week schedule. We've got a lot coming up. So let me let me run through it. Mostly for me, um, Monday mini episode with me talking about board game. Should be fun. I'm going to try and put some video clips in there. I filmed some stuff while I was playing it last week. Um, I've not done a board game review before, so it might be a bit crap, but we'll see. Wednesday, we've got a data link episode. Uh, it's um, Star Wars Day, proper Star Wars Day, and we're going to be going through all of that. 
uh, as well as previewing Ralph going to Star Wars Celebration and if we've got any last final thoughts on what is going to happen with Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then on Friday, we have got episode one of, of Obi-Wan Kenobi. There are two out. We're going to do episode one on Friday morning before Ralph goes to Celebration. We're going to do episode two on Saturday morning before uh, Ralph goes to Celebration. So next week, you've got four episodes of us. Um, only two of them will be coming out on the audio feeds. So make sure you subscribe on YouTube. If you're watching this, you probably already are. But if you're not, if you just happen to have stumbled upon this, follow us on YouTube and everywhere else along the bottom here. That's where you can find us. And then also, if you want to read my written review for Brotherhood, I go into a lot more detail there, uh, a lot of the depth and things. Um, you can find that there at tinyletter.com forward slash James Hewlett. But until, I guess, Monday, uh, don't give in to hate and celebrate the love. <laughs>